Hello, William Johnson here. Playing with 16th note ghost notes. These are things that we can use to fill up the sound and playing a cajon in a contemporary worship style music. So, for instance, instead of just actually playing here, I'm going to use my fingernails. And what I like to do, not fingernails, fingertips. And what I like to do is my hands on the drum and I'm actually, my thumb is on the drum and I'm just using these fingers here. So it's just my four fingers while my palm, my hand is still on the drum. Now this is reminiscent of a palm finger, some people call it heel toe, palm finger technique on a conga drum that you see in is pervasive and used in Afro-Cuban conga playing, right? So other hand drumming is using this quite a bit. And we're gonna borrow from this technique to, to fill up the sound. And we can practice this by, and by incorporating a basic two and four rhythm. What I mean is I'm playing my snare on beat two and beat four. So if I play a rhythm like that is on every, if I count to four and I count beat one starting where the bass is, right? Then that means the snare is on two and four. So now let's incorporate 16th notes because boom, ga. Boom, ga, those are quarter notes. One, two, three, four. We count the quarter notes and all the numbers. The eighth notes will be and. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and, boom, tick, ga, tick, boom, tick, ga, tick, all right? But 16th notes will be one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, or pepperoni, 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 right? So, we go da okay? Now, sometimes we could take some of those 16th notes out or we can leave them all in. It just depends. All right, so we're gonna practice with all of them and we're gonna have our hand on the drum and we're gonna play the 16th notes with our fingertips. But we're gonna still play beat one on the bass, beat two on the snare, beat three on the bass, beat four on the snare, all right? So we're gonna go one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. So all I'm doing is playing left, right, left, right. But when I get to one and two and three and four, I play them on either the bass or the snare. So it's basically playing left, right, left, right. And my right is always going bass or snare my right is always going bass or snare now you can do this all with one hand but it's a lot easier to just alternate so what right left 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 now this can be a powerful exercise to practice and to incorporate in the rhythm Hello friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I wanted to let you know that the shirt that I'm wearing in this video and many of my other videos is available. It's a conga shirt right here. There's a shelf below on I think almost all of my videos. If not, there's a link in the description below the video. You just expand that and you'll see a link where you can go to a site and purchase your conga shirt. If I just play boom, It's great. It works, right? And then I could go like this. With some dynamics and the accent. Take those. And that's 16 notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Take them out, and it goes back to the simpler, basic way. Even playing lightly, you can tell how, if you notice, it has a fuller sound doesn't mean and i don't mean fuller like greater i just mean there's more notes it's filling up more space right and and depending on how you play those 16th notes can add some character more character so i'm not just going i'm not no gotta admit it's very important that i'm ghosting the notes these are just touches and you can practice that to a net metronome, one E and a two E and a three. You want to get to the point where this is natural.
all right? Sometimes when I play and I hit a bass even on that hand, I might even with the same hand have a finger tip. Notice I'm hitting with a bass and I'm coming up with the fingertip. That's just this palm finger technique. And you could practice that as well. Palm, finger, palm, finger. Or what I like to practice, palm, palm, finger, finger. Practicing that over and over. The idea, or just one hand at a time, is to get used to playing with this fingertip after we hit a note. Back to the first exercise. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Practice that. Try to do it for two minutes straight to a slow tempo, uh, beats per minute, maybe 70 beats per minute or something like that, 60 beats per minute, very slow. Count out all the 16th notes. Very important. If you find yourself tripping up on it, then this exercise is for you. If you can do this for two minutes straight, making no mistake, at 70, 80 beats per minute, not a problem, not a problem at all. You can nail it. You're getting the right feel. Ghost notes might be too simple for you. Don't underestimate the fact that this can be very helpful if you're hearing it and you understand it. Doesn't mean neurologically, physiologically, physically that you're going, that you got it. We need to get it in our body as well. And a lot of times with a lot of my students, what happens is they hear something, it sounds simple. They can do it a couple times in a row. They go, oh, I can do that. But it's not about being able to do it a couple times in a row. It's about being able to do it up to tempo for a long period of time consistently with other musicians in a whole band. That's really what you need. And if you do it up to tempo and can't do it for two minutes straight, then the exercise is for you. It's to work on, right? It's a process. It's not an exciting thing to do that over and over and over and over, but it's a necessary thing for the repetition. All right, so I think this is a good exercise to start incorporating fingertips to get to fill up the sound. The reason why I have this and in a, in a cajon and worship type of context is because we are basically transcribing we're bringing from one place to another we're transcribing what's often done on the drum set to the cajon and not that the drum set is the almighty uh, but the drum set is basically filling a role and we're trying to find out the roles different roles throughout the music the hi-hat fills a role right that the drummer is doing with their right hand if they're crossing over uh, they're doing, that fills a role. The toms fill a role. The kick drum fills a role. It's not that it's just, oh, it's just the drum set, but it's actually filling roles. It's playing certain things that give the song a certain personality. And we want to find out what typically the drum set is doing, and then we can bring it over to the cajon. We can also borrow from other traditions. I mentioned Afro-Cuban to uh, technique and other rhythms, but the reason why we're borrowing from these other traditions is to have more technique, facility, vocabulary to fill the role, as I mentioned, that the drum set is doing. All right? So that's an exercise that we can work on. Uh, we can switch hands, switch hands, work on both hands, but basically it's every other one. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a. And faster it goes. And if you play other rhythms, you're still doing the same te same, te same technique. Right? I'm still using the same technique of playing that palm. I mean, fingertips while my palms are on the drum, okay? All right, so count out loud. Make sure you're counting out loud. Try this exercise, see if this helps. I think it's uh, beneficial in increasing your vocabulary and facility on the drum. And we want to get to the point where we're not just learning how to play a rhythm, then learning how to play another rhythm and get to the point where every time we hear a new song and it has a different rhythm, we don't know what to do. We want to have fundamentals so that we can use our fundamentals. It's like sight reading versus being able to, uh, uh, when you see a word you've never read before, you should still be able to read it. 
depending on how big and difficult the word is, you can sound it out because you understand the rules of that language as opposed to just memorizing what that word sounds like. So we are uh, not just sight reading a, uh, a, a rhythm like in reading an actual book. We're learning the fundamentals. All right. See you next time. May the Lord bless you, keep you, may he make his face shine upon you, and give you peace. See you next time.